There's no evidence for evolution anyway. So why should we compromise a perfectly good Bible, which has never been proven wrong, with a silly theory like evolution, which has never been proven right? I see no reason for it at all. All right, next question. I get asked this question quite frequently as I travel. They'll say, didn't the Pope accept evolution? Well, three different times, Popes so in, in down through history have said evolution fits with uh, the Bible teaching. And I disagree strongly. I would disagree with the Pope on many doctrines. Um, many of my friends and neighbors are Catholic, and I'm not going to try to bash Catholics too hard here, but they need to really study what their church teaches, and I think they would get out and uh, go to a different kind of church. Milton uh, Cooper <coughs> has a uh, book out called Behold a Pale Horse, in which he says, and I, I've tried to document this, and I, uh, many people have said, yes, I've heard that it's true, but I can't prove it, so I'll keep working on documentation. But here's what he says in his book. During World War II, a Polish salesman working for IG Farben Chemical Company sold cyanide, Zyklon B, and malathion to the Nazis to help exterminate the Jews at Auschwitz. After the war, he feared for his life, so he joined the Catholic Church and became a priest in 1946. In 1958, he was ordained as Poland's youngest bishop. After 30 days, the reigning pope was assassinated, and he became Pope John Paul II. If you study the history of the Catholic Church and their persecution of Christians down through the last few thousand years, read uh, Fox's Book of Martyrs or other books like that. I think you'll say, wow, I better get out of this. I used to go to the Catholic Church. I never was a member, but I used to go as a kid sometimes in Morton, Illinois, and I'm telling you, there are things they believe that are just simply unscriptural. And so I don't care what the Pope thinks about evolution. He's just plain wrong. He has tried to mix evolution in with uh, Christianity, and it just won't mix. <clears throat> I'm convinced there simply is no compromise in this war. You might want to get the website reachingcatholics.org and get more information on Catholicism if you'd like more on that. It's not my specialty by any means, but uh, John Ankerberg has some good books on that at the John Ankerberg program in Chattanooga, Tennessee on Catholicism. Okay, next question. Why do you use the King James Version of the Bible? <clears throat> well, that's a fair question. There are many different versions of the Bible that have been written. And again, this is not my field of expertise by any means, but there are uh, lots of good websites where you can get lots of information on this. When I was saved, uh, I was 16 years old. I'd been raised in the Methodist Church, the Mennonite Church, and the Lutheran Church. We were members of those, plus visited just about every other kind there was, the Catholic Church and lots of others. And so at Methodist Church, I had gotten a Revised Standard Version, RSV, in fourth grade for perfect attendance for one year. And that was the Bible I began using as a brand new Christian. When I was 16 years old and gave my heart to the Lord, I started reading my RSV. Within a few months, uh, within a few weeks, actually, I started going to a Baptist church in Pekin, Illinois, Bethel Baptist Church. And my pastor said, Kent, you ought to get a Bible. I said, I've got a Bible. I've been reading it and making notes in it. I've been reading it like crazy, reading two hours a day. He said, you ought to get a real Bible. Well, I was a little offended at first. I said, what do you mean? i got a real Bible. He said, no, you don't. And he explained to me about the different versions. Let me give you just a condensed uh, version of the version story, and maybe you can understand why the King James is the one you ought to use if you speak English. When the Bible was first uh, being written in New Testament times, it would be shortly after the birth of Christ, after the, the death and resurrection of Christ, people started writing the New Testament books. Now, back in these days, 2,000 years ago, they did not have printing presses. They didn't have uh, Xerox machines. You know, you couldn't go stick and make copies. You had to, if you wanted to copy something, you had to hand write it. Printing press wasn't invented until about 1,500, you know, 400, 500 years ago. So they would hand write copies. When they wanted to make copies of the Bible, they would unroll the scroll, copy it, sit there all day and make copies. And then at the end of the day, roll the scroll back up. Well, you can only roll and unroll a scroll so many times, and it begins to wear out. And so sure enough, after a few hundred years, the scroll is worn out, and now you have copies that have been made. And the people that did this are called the scribes, where we get our word inscribe or subscribe uh, to, to write, is what the, the root word means, to scribe. So they were the scribes, and their job was to copy this. Now, Back then, if they found a mistake in your copy that could not be easily corrected, I mean, nothing would, they wouldn't buy a copy, especially of the Bible, if there was a mistake in it. It would be thrown away. And it may take you, you know, three months to write out a copy of the Bible, and so they had to uh, uh, make sure it was right. And they would check it several different ways. They would count it, the letters, they would read it backwards, and they, you know, all sorts of ways to check. 
the Bible. And bottom line is they were extremely accurate in their copying procedure. The so copies would be certified as correct, and then they would go into circulation as legitimate certified Bibles. A few hundred years after the birth of Christ, there was a group of folks that went down to Egypt to start a cult, sort of like Jehovah's Witnesses today. They wanted everybody to think they were Christians, and they wanted to claim to be Christians, but they did not believe most of the major doctrines of Christianity. They didn't believe in the uh, deity of Christ, for instance. And so these folks down in Egypt, which at that time, Alexandria was a major city, and they, they became known as the Alexandrians. They made their own translation of the Bible, changing all sorts of things, leaving out verses they didn't like. Now, if, you, if you're going to make a counterfeit $20 bill, you don't put Mickey Mouse's picture on it. Okay, You try to make it as close as possible to the original. So their counterfeit copy that they made, came to be known as the Alexandrian Manuscript, was, uh, had a lot of gospel in it. You could still get saved reading it, I'm sure. But in many cases, when it says, Lord Jesus Christ, they would t just say Jesus because they wanted to minimize or diminish the idea that Jesus is Lord. So they would leave some of that stuff out. Well, this Alexandrian copy of the Bible spread for you know a few years while their cult lasted.